Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandy Alnock and I'm going to show you how I made this gorgeous doodle on black watercolor paper. Yes, they make black watercolor paper and they make inks that you can doodle with. So nice combination. And I'm going to show you the two new inks that I got from Ferris Wheel Press this month. And you can use my coupon code there anytime for anything you want on their website. So I'll show you two of the new inks and one of the new pens they have. I'll show you how to fill it and everything. So let's get started, shall we? I'm in my second month as a Ferris Wheel Press Ambassador. So they've sent me my care package and this one has Ultramarina ink. And this is an acrylic ink. It's opaque and it's permanent. It's not going to be waterproof. Uh, this one is one that you don't want to put in your fountain pen because it's going to gum up the works. If you get kind of dried ink onto your pen nib, your dip pen nib, then you can kind of soak it in some isopropyl alcohol or wipe it down with isopropyl and see if that gets it off or soak it if you have to. They do include a silicone stopper to preserve the ink longer on the inside. This is my swatch card. It didn't react to my water lifting test or my bleach lifting test. So nothing lifted on it afterward. But uh, replace that little stopper and close it up so it will preserve that ink. The second color is called Unfettered Flight and it's a pale blue and it has a shimmer to it, a duochrome shimmer. And you can always tell when it's got a shimmer of some kind because when you look at the bottom of the bottle, everything settles. So you're gonna wanna shake that before you fill your pen, shake it before you dip a pen in it, whatever you're gonna do. And if you put it in a pen, I recommend even shaking the pen periodically just to make sure that you don't get settling of all of that beautiful shimmer. And this is kind of what it looks like. It's a purplish slash bronzish, I don't know what you'd call that color, but you can see it kind of looks grayish when it's over top of the blue and then it kind of changes in the light. The pen they sent is my first one from Ferris Wheel Press. It's super lightweight, um, it, very inexpensive pen. And you just take the back end of it off and it comes with a universal converter. All you have to do is stick that into your bottle and then twist the little knob and it sucks the ink up into the converter, kind of like a turkey baster. And then put that into your pen push it in so it seats nicely and then put the back of the pen on and you should be ready to go. And then we are ready to get started on making some artwork. I did a couple of test doodles and this, I thought I'd just show you a little bit of it on white. I decided I didn't like white for either of these all that much because the, the light blue, the unfettered flight is kind of an okay color. It's, it's a pretty blue. But when you use it in any kind of thick fashion, like that blob of gray right there, it's kind of, it looks kind of grayish like it did on my swatch card. I liked more of the shimmer aspect of it. So that's why I decided to switch to the black watercolor paper because the black will hopefully test just how opaque is the ultramarina as well as what this shimmer is going to look like on the black paper. You can also use like a black cardstock or something. You just want something heavy enough that's going to hold up to wet ink and uh, that sort of thing. So this is just what they look like on white paper. But let's switch over to some Stonehenge Aqua. And it's a cold pressed paper. It's got a little bit of texture to it, but it's not super textured. It's, I think, a composite. It's not 100% cotton. Um, then we've got this nib, which I decided to test out. I have never used it before. <laughs> I bought it years ago from a site that I can no longer find. I guess they're gone now. And I have purchased some other nibs like this. So hopefully in the near future, I'll have some recommendations to give you if you want to try some of these. They're called either Chinese or Arabic calligraphy nibs, or they can also be called parallel pens. And... I don't really know what makes a good one or a not good one, but I have this one, so let's try it out. So I dipped it into the ink, and then I'm just going to move it around on the piece of paper. 
Now, depending on what angle you hold it, how fast you move it, what paper you're using, like this one has a texture to it. So it's giving me a little bit of a dry brush edge on some of the shapes. Whereas if I used it on a really smooth paper, I'd get more of clean lines. So it depends on what you're looking for, what kind of paper you've got. And the angle you hold it and the speed can make a difference. You can make all different kinds of motions with it. You can make long skinny lines by turning the pen completely on its side and that sort of thing. Just lots of fun that you can have with a pen like this for all different kinds of things. Now I don't do calligraphy, so I don't know why I have all these calligraphy nibs in my collection, but I'm gonna play around with some of them in this project because I have them, so why not try it? Not just this one, this is the only wide one that I have of this type, but as I was playing with this ink and I wanted to add more to the doodle, I got out a little cup that I have and I have no idea where these nibs came from, but they're a bunch of calligraphy nibs of different kinds and different brands. So at some point, if I ever have any good recommendations, I will share them with you. But for now, I just say play with whatever you've got. And I know that I didn't spend a lot of money on any of my nibs, except for this one. I remember this one being pricey. but. Um, just use whatever nibs you've got and try them out. So I've put a, uh, what what is called a manga nib, at least according to the little package I had, into my handle. And this handle, a few po folks asked about it last time I used it. And the handle, uh, I would not recommend necessarily. It looks really cool. It looks very antique -y, But sadly, it's not a very good pen. The metal part keeps like falling off of the stick part. So it's uh, kind of cheapy, <laughs> but there you go. Uh, this is another one of the calligraphy nibs. I didn't like the super thin manga tip, so I decided to switch to something a little bit heavier so I could get more of that beautiful periwinkle kind of color. I switched to another nib to try to find something that was a little skinnier and add more to it. And as I was working on it, I kept seeing these places where the the wide nib, I had kind of made a point that it went out one direction or the other. I thought, well, what if I make those look like they're splashes that are coming out and just give this thing a lot of motion? So that's where I started going with a lot of my little lines that I was adding to it, giving them swirls and, I don't know, feathers. I don't know what you want to call any of this. It was just having fun with the ink and letting the lines go. It's one of the best things about doodling is that you don't have to think, you don't have to worry about it. The only thing I think about when I'm doing a doodle like this is what that flow is doing. So I'm looking at the shapes that something's coming out of. And if I can't continue in the direction of that original blob, then I change the shape of that original blob by adding to it a little bit and trying to make it a beautiful curve so that if something was just splashing across the paper like this, that the lines that I'm making look like they could be possible instead of having things that are jarring and get stopped by, you know, a, a certain kind of line that, that breaks the flow. So once I got done with this portion of it, I decided it was time to uh, take a look at it, see if I wanted to add the other color to it because I wasn't sure what that duochrome was going to do on here. I did test out the very slightest bit of the duochrome ink on black sketchbook paper. And on the smooth sketchbook paper, I could get enough ink out of the pen to make it work. I did have to do a little scribble because you need just enough of that for the gold, like whatever the shimmer is to show. My pen didn't do anything at all on this paper. It just doesn't have enough pouring out of that nib to make it really work. So I switched over to a liner brush instead. And that also meant that I could dip this long liner brush into the bottle and get some of that shimmer to move in the bottle and not have to be shaking it all the time and just apply that for my lines. And I was trying really hard to find angles that I could photograph for you so you could see how it goes on. You can, at the beginning of each stroke, just see the moisture. And then as it dries, if there's enough of that shimmer in there, then you see the shimmer rise out of it, which is kind of cool. And the two are kind of an interesting combination. I wouldn't necessarily say they're my favorite colors to choose 
to pair up. There might be a different color that would be better to use with the opaque color, something that's more in a blue rather than in this warmer kind of colorway. But I'm happy enough with it. I even decided to spatter some on so I could get some dots in there, paint some manual dots and blobs so I can make this really uh, a very organic kind of splatter across the paper. And this is going to be one of those. It's going to be on my website very soon in the next week or so. I hope to update the site with more pieces for sale. I have a huge pile of them I have to photograph and all that. I will let you know when that's available. But in the meantime, if you're interested in any of these inks, feel free to go over to Ferris Wheel Press. Use my last name, Allnock, for 10% off anything you wish to purchase. And that's about it. I will see you again very soon. Go doodle something, draw something, whatever. Make something, create something every day. And I will see you again in another couple of days. Take care. Bye.